what's up guys in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to modify the original SX70 camera for 600 film and even uh, eye type film it's actually pretty straightforward to modify the original SX70 if you have some experience with soldering or know somebody who has I will be doing uh, two mods for this. The first is the capacitor mod, which will uh, change the shutter speed because the 600 film is four times uh, faster compared to the original SX70. It'll give you just sharper images, really the best way to, to modify. You will need a screwdriver with a Torx 4. Um, then you're gonna need a capacitor that is about 200 picofarads and then uh, some desoldering tools and a soldering iron. For this first mod I only need to remove those four screws on both sides. Be careful so you don't lose them down here because uh, they can actually get stuck uh, down here and then you will have to use a magnet to get it up so just be a little bit careful yeah that's one also be very careful that you don't puncture this bellow here this all rubber is it's actually still uh, sealing the light, which is quite impressive after 40 years. Uh, I think the whole build quality of this camera is amazing. This this uh, this body is made from a special medical kind of plastic uh, with a chrome layer. Uh, it's really expensive stuff. Last screw, yeah. So I can just flip it over like this. Okay, so the capacitor that you need to replace is under here. Okay, there are two connectors. So first uh, you need to remove the solder on those two. And then I'm gonna flip open the circuit board. So I'm just gonna bend it slightly like this. Okay, and then it should be enough to get the capacitor out. Okay guys, I already modified the capacitor on this one, so I'm not going to do it again to save the PCB, uh, the circuit board, but I just received another SX70. This is a 1977 Model 2. The first time you are doing the modification, I recommend you to go for a original SX70. Uh, silver model because it's just easier the screws are easier and uh, soldering is easier on this camera they used a special very special screw that is a one by one millimeter uh, square screw head I'm going to try to remove them with uh, the tools that I have here I'm gonna try to use uh, a flat bit um, that is um, 1.5 millimeter wide. I already managed to remove one of them. You need to press pretty hard on the screw. Come on. Wow. Nope. I'm gonna use this file and uh, make some uh, grooves that I can use a flat screwdriver. Trying with the biggest bit now. I 
I finally managed to get all four screws out. After uh, filing them down and using a large flat screwdriver. These screws obviously won't go back in. Uh, I'm going to replace them with some other ones. Uh, more on that later. So now it's time to replace the capacitor. So the capacitor is connected on these two. So now I need to remove, try to remove the black goo that is over here. You need to be a little bit careful with the traces here so you don't uh, break the connections. Okay. This is not too hard. The next step is to remove uh, this uh, little uh, plastic uh, notch here so you can be able to lift up the circuit board. Like that. This is just enough uh, so I can get the capacitor out. Uh, I've seen uh, a lot of people are desoldering the whole board. They're desoldering here and here. But uh, you don't need to do that. Uh, you can just bend the board carefully. It's made of uh, glass fiber probably, so it can take a little bit of bending. Not too much, of course. Now I'm gonna try to remove the copper. I'm gonna use the suction pump. I'm gonna lift the whole unit out now. Carefully, be very careful with this cable. And now it's much easier to get in there. go let's see if I can still measure this um, one leg is broken off but uh, perhaps I can still measure it and it says 1.6768 nanofarad that's about Roughly a thousand picofarads, which is actually as expected, and that's good. And then I will be using a 200 picofarads uh, capacitor because uh, you just take this value and divide it by four. So here's my capacitor. Now I need to make sure that I have two holes here. I have a hole here. Yeah, I have holes in both places. Okay, try to insert it. Okay. Okay, so there is a lot of room under the uh, circuit board here for the capacitor. Push it down. Okay, yeah. Solder it on. Okay. 
Just inspect both soldiers and make sure that they, they have a good connection. Looks good. Time to cut off uh, the extra legs. I'm gonna add some uh, tape. Okay, it's time to put it back together. I'm gonna remove the tape from the bellow here. That. And while I'm in the lens compartment, I might as well clean it. I see there's a little bit of, uh, of grit here. The lens looks pretty clean, which is great. As I told you, I won't be putting back those screws. Uh, I will be using some uh, replacements. And I'm using some M2 screws. And uh, you can also find these screws in a lot of uh, like consumer electronics, uh, garbage stuff. Uh, I found also a couple of screws in uh, an old uh, hard drive. And they actually fit perfectly. Uh, so just uh, look around and uh, take apart uh, old stuff and uh, you might find uh, proper screws there. Or if you don't, you can just order online screws that are M2, um, 3. The pain is over. Come on now. Then one on the other side. The other mod that I will be showing you is the iType mod. So the iType film is also uh, commonly available, uh, but it's actually quite a bit cheaper because it doesn't contain a battery. It's a kind of a waste to buy a new battery every time you buy a new film. So what you will do is you will um, take your old film that is used, just uh, rip it open in the front and just, uh, just pull out the uh, the battery from it. Yeah, so the battery lasts long and it's very slim so you can actually install it under the camera and that's what I'll be showing you now. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to remove uh, the leather base, the leather uh, skin underneath and this can be quite stuck because it's very well glued so it was a bit hard to rip off. Just make sure that you get the aluminium part that is kind of part of it. I used alcohol to remove uh, any remaining glue here. Now I'll be using the Torx 4 again to open the base compartment. I already did this, I'm just going to show you again how I did it. So under here there is a connector for battery that is quite simple to get access to. Then I will be removing the, the roller compartment and you just squeeze here and just lift it out like this. Then remove the cover. So what you need to do is to solder from 
here, that's the negative, the minus. And then from here, uh, the plus. And uh, the cables needs to be thin, but don't use too thin cables. Uh, this is about uh, wire gauge uh, 20. If you have thinner cables, you could use double cables. And make sure they are isolated because this uh, cover uh, can actually conduct a little bit of electricity and make uh, uh, drain your battery. So I just solder those cables here and then I put some tape over it to prevent short circuit. Then simply pull the wires through. Put the screws back on. I'll be collapsing the camera for the assembly now. I need to apply a little bit of pressure because of the cables. To reinstall the roller compartment, you actually need to have this uh, metal thing here go in between. And then you just squeeze here and click it into place. Okay guys, so the battery holder is uh, 3D printed and you can download the file in the description. So it's designed for having the, the battery pack to slip in. Like that. And there are two notches here that will hold it in place. And the good thing about this is that it actually replaces the whole leather piece here. So you don't have to get a new leather for it. I'm going to use contact adhesive glue for this one. I think that's that's the best. Um, it's pretty sticks pretty well and uh, you don't need to apply heat. You could also use a heat glue but uh, it could melt through, actually melt and bend the, the holder. So my advice would be to use uh, contact adhesive. So I'm just going to use a little bit in case I want to remove the cartridge uh, holder later. Just going to put a little bit in the corner. Oops. And this is the kind that uh, should dry. You apply it and you wait a few minutes. So I'm going to pull through the wires first. And now I have to try to accurately hit all the corners. And the holes here for the screws. Now it's time to create the uh, spring contacts. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the soldering wick for this because it's uh, 
made of copper so it's uh, it's a good conductor of electricity and it has a good width to it so I'm going to mount one here and one here and then use a piece of kitchen sponge under to make a little feather uh, flexible feather cushion that will pull it up because you want to have a good contact with those switches here Leave it for a couple of minutes. In the meanwhile, I'm going to uh, cut down on the isolated cables. Okay, so we have removed the isolation on both cables. I can now mount the cushion. One here. And one here. And I'm gonna cut two pieces from the de-isolation wick. It's gonna be approximately Going to be starting here and going over, so approximately this long. That's one, and two. Then I'm going to try to solder it to the cable. And if you don't have a uh, soldering tin with built-in flux like this. Uh, make sure to use some flux and if you're new to solder and you think the soldering is going it's very hard uh, then it's just it could be that you're missing flux from the soldering tin second one Okay, I'm gonna glue it here and here. And for this, I'm going to use super glue and activator because that's that's the most sturdy glue. So I'm just gonna have a little drop. And then I'm going to spray some activator on it. Hold it for a few seconds and then it's pretty solid. And the other one. Okay, so now the spring contacts looks pretty flexible. And to make them work even better, I will make a little bend. Okay, you make a little bend like that, so they will be working better. And uh, yeah, let's see if it works. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, if you want more videos like this, uh, please subscribe and good luck with the modifications.